Hi there and good evening to uh, and welcome <laughs> most importantly to the 43rd Octoprint on Air uh, broadcast. I'm your host Gina Heuske, also the creator and main developer of Octoprint for those of you who for some reason didn't know that already. And uh, yeah, in this one I will be doing the same that I always do. I'll tell you all about what I've been up to since the last one of these what the next steps will be in the development of Octoprint. Uh, then we'll have a quick look at the stats and then usually we would have um, uh, we, we, we would have um, a Q&A segment, but this time there are no questions at all in the backlog, but I keep an eye on the live chat here. Um, uh, and uh, if anything comes up in the meantime, I'll see that I address this then and there. All right, so first things first, what I have been up to. You might remember if you watched the 42nd one last time uh, that I uh, yeah, was on the verge of going on vacation back then and I actually did that, thankfully. Uh, had a long and extended Christmas vacation, actually four weeks uh, longer than usual, but that was really necessary because I was this close to burning out and I yeah, did my best to not do that and so far it seems to have uh, uh, been a success. So, um, yeah, uh, that was that. I spent my vacation doing a lot of uh, playing games, reading, watching stuff. Uh, yeah, also uh, catching up on my YouTube backlog and also, yeah, working on the one or other pet project in the background that uh, you might or might not hear at some point. Um, yeah, so right after I got back in mid yeah, January, I was greeted with a new Raspberry Pi 4 revision, hardware revision, uh, and that manifested in that we suddenly got reports of Octopi no longer booting on some Pis. And uh, first of all, it was a bit tricky to figure out why that was the case and pinning down the exact issue. So I reached out to the people at Raspberry Pi and after some back and forth, I uh, found the information that I was looking for, thankfully. Um, and it turned out there was a small hardware change on the Raspberry Pi that required a new uh, bootloader uh, or, or firmware, something like that. And that was simply not yet present on the Octoprint 018 image on the stock one. And so what I did was I uh, modified the Octopi up to date image build script that I had uh, already installed a while ago that also keeps the Octopi image now up to date with the latest Octoprint so that when you download the image and flash the image through the Raspberry Pi imager or also manually through the web page, you will always get the latest Octoprint instead of something older. And um, so I modified that to also do a, a, a kernel and a bootloader update and that, yeah, that, that worked out fine. Uh, so that is also now a step on this, of this up to date. Um, um, now, nah, up to date build. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, whenever I build a new uh, new image via that, in, in, in the future, there will also be a bootload and a kernel update, and that should hopefully ensure that uh, we no longer run into any kind of hardware uh, issues. Um, so, uh, yeah, and that is also, by the way, the image that you get when you install Octoprint through uh, Octopi. Now I, I confuse myself here. Uh, when you inst install Octopi through the Raspberry Pi imager. And speaking of the Raspberry Pi Imager, there was also a new release of that just, I think, last week or the week before that, um, where you where the, the hidden uh, advanced settings menu that so far you needed to press Control Shift X, I think, for to show up can now be enabled by default if an, if an image supports that and I set the necessary flags on the Octopi entry so that this menu will now show up as a nifty little button that you can click. And that thing now also allows you to not only configure the Wi-Fi on the on the image before you uh, actually boot it up for the first time, but you can also do stuff like change the password and and here comes a little heads up from my side: change the username Pi uh, of the of the default user on the Raspberry Pi to something else. And this is something that you please, please, please should not be doing with Octopi because then uh, Octoprint will not be able to launch on the device. Not because Octoprint relies on this username, but because the startup scripts that ship with Octopi rely on this username. So um, this is something that in the future will need to get addressed on the image, but currently it isn't yet. And we currently also do not have the bandwidth to take care of that. So 
just keep your hands off the username and uh, you're 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 welcome to change the password and uh, yeah just don't change the username uh, the the download instructions also tell you not to do that uh, including a little uh screenshot and uh, because a picture says more than a thousand words uh, but we've seen some people run into this particular issue the past week or so so uh, just as an additional public service announcement here please do not change the username on the raspberry pi imager you can change everything else but leave that please as it is yeah um and i figured uh, the yeah the the, the convenience of being able to edit the Wi-Fi and everything else through this menu is well worth the risk that someone will change this username and then run into an issue um, when every official download and setup guy tells them not to. So that's why I'm keeping it for now, but well, well, we'll, we'll have to look. I'll also try if I can maybe get some leverage within Raspberry Pi Foundation to maybe have the Raspberry Pi imager have some more granular configuration options so that we can say, yeah, you can uh, you can change your password, but not the username in this menu. But so far, there is no such option. So the things are like they are for now. OK, so that was the Raspberry Pi story of my uh, first uh, week. Well, apart from the imager that just happened recently, but I figured that would fit in there nicely. Uh, another thing that I also had to take care of in my very first week back from work, uh, back to work, is um, uh, 173. Because one morning I woke up and had to realize that the nightly builds uh, or nightly test installs of Octoprint in various constellations had failed for the Python 2 installations or uh, for the Python 2 environments because one of the dependencies of Octoprint suddenly yeah, or not suddenly, but one of the dependencies of Octoprint uh, dropped Python 2 support. As a reminder, Python 2 has been end of life for over two years now. It became end of life on January 1st, 2020. We now have 2022. Um, and so um, it is to be expected that more and more dependencies will drop support. The problem, of course, is that uh, Octoprint 173 or Octoprint 17 still officially supports to be installed under Python 2. So I saw myself forced to uh, push out a new release that pins this particular dependency to a Python 2 supporting version if Octoprint is being installed under Python 2. So yeah, that fixed that, that fixed this issue. And I also uh, used the use the opportunity to also uh, deploy a, a bug fix for the uh, watchlist processing, which had been contributed by Sean already a while ago, but never so far made it into a stable release uh, and, and, and also roll that out with that. Um, as a quick summary, the, the, the uh, did I say watchlist processing? I meant the blacklist processing, apologies. Um, yeah, the blacklist did not properly process, so it just did not work. No nothing was broken there per se that it could prevent things from starting it just couldn't prevent things from starting so that was the the problem yeah but that is also now solved and that brings me to the next uh, item on my list which is uh, so most of my time the rest of the time has been working towards 180 and the biggest announcement that i have to make in that regard is then uh 1.7 of uh, Octoprint 1.7 will be the final version of Octoprint that supports Python 2. Um, as I said, Python 2 has been end of life for over well over two years now, and um, more and more libraries that Octoprint depends on, or that libraries that Octoprint depends on depend on, and so on and so on, uh, drop Python 2 support. So it gets harder and harder and harder um, to actually keep stuff working on Python 2. Um, the maintenance and testing overhead is also not something to just ignore because uh, there are a bunch of workarounds in the code to keep it compatible to both versions that uh, constantly need to be kept in mind also when developing new features. Um, then there are workarounds in there that fix bugs in third-party libraries that I cannot update because of the situation that they dropped Python 2 support. Um, things like this. So all in all, um, trying to stay compatible to Python 2 for that long, or actually staying compatible for Python 2 for that long in Octoprint, uh, is starting to become a very, very, very expensive thing that is actually 
taking up a lot of valuable development time and this is why I decided contrary to my original goal to, on, uh, to only drop uh, Python 2 support when I also release Octoprint 2.0 to do it with 1.8.0. So one Octoprint 1.8.0 will no longer support, uh, install on Python 2 environments, which means that if you are still on Python 2 with your Octoprint installation, even though it will now probably have been pestering you for a while to change that, um, you, you, you will be left behind now. Um, you will not be able to install any updates um, that are 1.8 or, or, or later, um, and you will be stuck on 1.7 for all eternity unless you switch over to python 3. and the way i will go about this is that um, when i release 180 i will also release a final 17 version and this final 17 version will pin all dependencies to a very very specific uh, version number so anything that octoprint depends on will get a pin uh, which means that you will not get even by accident, any more new, newer libraries, uh, you will uh, just get the stuff that still installs under Python 2. And you will also get a redirection for the update mechanism that will um, make Octoprint look for updates no longer on the regular Octoprint repository, but on an Octoprint legacy repository that I've already created. And that is purely to leave me the option, should at some point there be some horrible, horrible, horrible safety issue in Octoprint, or security issue rather, um, something that, I don't know, could steal your cat and, and uh, allow someone to break into your home or anything, or, or just burn your printer down, or I don't know, something really, really, really dangerous, then I still have the option to try to roll out a patch to, to fix this issue. But um, be aware that this is really just an absolute emergency kind of thing that I'm leaving in there to have the option if I really need it. But other than that, yeah, you'll be left behind. 1.8.0 is the way forward. Python 3 is the way forward. And there will be no more time uh, invested into uh, anything that is Python 2 related in the Octoprint project. Well, uh, apart from maybe some uh, oldish bundle plugins that I also still need to migrate, but um, uh, that that is all. Yeah. Okay. So, um, too long didn't read. <laughs> if your Octoprint version is still running on Python 2, do what the next screen has been telling you for a while now, and please, please finally update. There are a bunch of op options for that. First of all, if you're on Octopi 017, um, there is, or on, an, or on your own install, on your custom install, there is this nifty little migration script that Charlie Powell wrote, and that has been available now for over a year as well, I think at least, or maybe better part of a year at least. And, um, Either a year or half a year, I don't know, something like that. It's not important. Anyhow, this thing is available, it's proven, it works, and it is reliable, so please use that to migrate. If you're on an earlier version of Octopi, yeah, your operating system is outdated anyhow, so it's time to do a backup, flash a new version of Octopi, which already comes with Python 3, and restore your backup and you will be fine. And if you are on Octopi 018 already, you're fine anyhow, because that already shipped with Octoprint running under, in, an, in a Python 3 environment. If you do not know what Python version your Octoprint is running on, then let me quickly show you how to figure this out, because it's fairly simple. This is Octoprint, um, and right down here in the lower left corner, there is the versions that are important here. So you see, this is Octoprint 1.8.0, F 275 blah blah this is a development version not a released one and it is running under python 3.70 and this what it says here this is the truth if for example you log into octopi and run python dash dash version on the command line it will probably still tell you python 2 that doesn't mean that octoprint is running under python 2 that just means that the default python binary on Octopi, or rather on Debian, still points to a Python 2, but that doesn't mean that uh, Octoprint is running under Python 2. The important part is always what it says 
down here. So check that. Um, and yeah, if you are an Octopi, that will also tell you the Octopi version here, but this one is currently running locally on my uh, development machine. So it, it is not uh, saying that, but you can also check that. If it says Octopi 018, you are probably fine. But the most important part really is Python 3 here. If push comes to shove, you can also check that, by the way, by checking into the details of the system information, because it will also say that here and Python version. But really, the quickest way is just look into the lower left corner and you will get your answers. OK. That was that. That was a big one, actually, and there might still be some bugs to iron out here and there, but I think we already caught the majority of these. Um, what else did I do? Yeah, so um, the past week saw me merging various PRs. Uh, I got back from vacation and was greeted with an info f uh, inbox full of them. I have no idea what happened, but I appreciate this. And that was really nice, but it just took me a, a while to catch up to everything again. But I think I'm close now. There are only, I think, two left and or maybe three uh, out of I don't know how many. And uh, yeah, as I said, I have no idea what prompted this explosion of activity, of rather unusual activity, I might add, but hey, keep it coming. I really enjoyed that. Um, so I thought I would just uh, tell you about some of them, not all, because that would be too much, but just some of them, uh, just to also give them some visibility here and to the people who, who made them. So we'll first start with something that I also want to show you. So I'm going to switch back to my white screen. Sorry for that. And that is that we now have thumbnails for the time lapses. Uh, so as you see, the list here has been uh, overhauled a little bit. Uh, you now have this mini view thing here, this mini thumbnail view here, and you can also click the button and play the time lapse. I mean, nothing is really happening here because that was just a test one, but as you can see there is a player and it is embedded and it is working. And that is rather nice, I should add. Um, and the time lapse will not be created for all your existing time lapses, uh, though, uh, the, sorry, the thumbnails will not be created for all your existing time lapses, though I'm looking into maybe providing a command line uh, tool for that um, so that uh, you can also retroactively actively fill all of these up so that everything looks nice. But uh, everything that you will, every time lapse that you will create after uh, Octoprint 180 is released with Octoprint 180, I should maybe add, um, is uh, is going to also get this thumbnail image generated. And so you will get a small little preview here. That was done by, uh, yeah, I'm now going to try to pronounce this nickname correctly and apologies if I butcher it, um, Chris XD. And another thing by Chris XD, Chris XD was quite busy. Uh, was uh, uh, so Octoprint's um, webcam integration has now also been extended to support HLS and WebRTC, and now those displays also, um, thanks to the work by Chris XD, support uh, rotation and mirroring, just like the regular webcam, the MJPEG stream, uh, MJPEG backed webcam in Octoprint. You can also rotate and mirror and stuff these uh, these webcams if if that is needed. Then uh, Chris XD also dis disabled a spell checker in, in the plugin search and some other places where it was getting in the way with, with searching for stuff that certainly does not need to be spell checked and would only cause issues then. For example, if you type that in on, no on mobile and then it gets converted and stuff. Then we got support for parsing custom temperatures from M115 responses uh, contributed by G Dombiak. Uh, Synman and uh, edit encoding the conf uh, encoding configuration for the serial line. So if uh, your printer for some reason is speaking something that is not ASCII compliant, which would be kind of surprising because that they usually should, but just in case you can set this to whatever it needs, or you can just set it to UTF-8 and be happy forever, hopefully. Um, Oli Skid added uh, a file moved and folder moved event, which might be of interest to some plugin developers out there who've been looking out for something. 
and something that I just merged earlier this week by Zurdo, and for that I once again have to switch on the screen, is um, state indicators on the temperature graph. And let me quickly show you uh, how that looks. So if I print uh, this file now, you will see that, um, yeah, currently it is all a bit jammed to the back, uh, to the end there, but you see this little uh, indicator, this little vertical line up here, here, this green one, that says start. And now the printer is heating up, and then at some point uh, uh, I might also press pause, and that will then, once the pause is processed and the next temperature uh, point comes in, will also generate a pause flag. And of course, usually this stuff doesn't happen within 20 seconds of each other, and so things are a bit more spread over the whole um, graph. Actually, maybe just try to demonstrate that with a fresh connection instead of one where everything here is already 30 seconds, um, which it now is. Ugh. I might have to restart the server for that, I just realized, because it is, yeah, I have to, re yeah, okay, then we are, then you simply have to believe me, but you have now state, you now have state indicators for print start, print stop, print pause, print resume, uh, and print cancel. And if you do not want that for whatever reason, you can also disable that here and that will be persisted in your browser. So um, you can disable that in this browser and in another it will show, still show. By default, it will be shown. And we are still discussing in the dev channels on the Discord or where to place this button. Currently it is here. It might end up somewhere else uh, uh, before 1.8.0 is released. We are still discussing this. Maybe it will also just go into some advanced options that are hidden underneath here. We will see. But nifty little feature, really excited to uh, yeah, have this in production because I think it will help a lot of people to figure out some yeah, crucial time points in their, in their graphs and, and, and get everything a bit better uh, and easier to understand. All right, um, back to me. Then we also now have a new development tool right integrated into Octoprint or rather a new developer command. Uh, which is that uh, Charlie contributed um, a octoprint dev CSS colon build as a subcommand, which allows you to invoke the less compiler from within octoprint uh, already prefixed with all the files that you need, depending on further command um, uh, uh, parameters, just run octoprint dev CSS build dash dash help to learn more, but this is rather nifty and um, makes it easier for developers, especially core developers, of course, uh, to build this stuff, which I find kind of nice. Uh, Jim, he of the many plugins, uh, uh, also contributed settings for the SD command, because apparently there are now some printers, uh, for the SD cancel command, sorry, because there are now some printers, printer firmwares apparently out there who no longer use M25 for that, because who cares about standards? We'll just brew our own or something like that. And so now you can reconfigure that if your printer is one of them. I will never understand why we constantly have to do something or why manufacturer constantly have to do something like this and ignore perfectly working specs, but okay. Yeah, and then uh, Thailand HH also contributed various uh, translation fixes. And yeah, another big thing actually that um, took me a while to decide on whether I wanted to merge it or not, and also figure out whether it was backwards compatible or not. But in the end, apparently it was, or rather I made it so um, after some back and forth this morning. Um, is uh, so. Um, Flaviot contributed a, a full-blown refactoring of the way that Octoprints internally manages and stores its settings, so the currently active settings, because the thing is that Octoprint has this uh, hier hierarchy, uh, settings hierarchy going on, so first there are the default settings, then plugins can add more to that, or certain overlays that are configured in, uh, in Octoprint on startup or something like that, and then finally on top there is the contents of the config YAML. And, um, the, the lookup so far was a bit convoluted because you basically had a settings hierarchy on each of these layers and then had to traverse this in an ultra complicated way. And he found a way to make all of this easier and faster. So setting lookups will in the future be way, way faster. And that is really, really nice. Still got to iron out some kinks in there, but I think now it works. At least all the tests are finally green and I didn't see weird behavior this morning when I started the server. So there's hope. 
And also in the pipeline, there is an update queue from, from Jim, he of the many, of the many plugins, uh, which will allow you, so you're currently printing and then Sunday you get an update notification and then you have to wait until the print is done before you can actually press uh, go on it. But until then you already have forgotten again and ugh, everything is stupid and now you get it again right in the middle of printing so this is part of the future uh, part of the past at least once i merge this pr um because uh, then in the future we'll, we will just be able to say yeah okay into the queue with that and uh after the print completes it will then after i think we agreed on adding a little countdown but i have to check uh it will then automatically start that for you in the background and you don't have to worry about it anymore uh, about forgetting and uh, adding it anymore and then uh sean who i uh see is in the shed in the shed in the chat um is also still working on some uh yeah ordering of of of, of hooks that i need to check and actually forgot to write out what hook specifically here but um yeah that i think that pr got a push just before i started with the stream so i have to check that out and maybe we can also still pull this into 180 that would be nice yeah okay um another thing that i did is i also prepared an update for the pi support plugin if you don't know what the pi support plugin is um that is a plugin that Octoprint depends on um, and that is only active if you're running Octoprint on a Pi but not necessarily on, on, on OctoPi so if you're just running it on a regular Pi that suffices and um, this plugin takes care of some Pi specific stuff and in the future it will also take care of detecting if your VC gen command is not properly configured or rather the user that Octoprint is running under is lacking the permissions to execute this, it because that is the command that Octoprint will use to figure out if your Pi is detecting some kind of, uh, of, of, of throttling under voltage, over, overheating, whatever situation. And if it's misconfigured, Octoprint cannot do that. And uh, that will now at least ensure that you are aware of that. If you then decide to ignore this situation, that is, of course, you're right as always, but it is still will tell you about this now. That actually was a request uh, by a user because they did misconfigure it or, or rather didn't know that it was misconfigured and then were confused that uh, they were seeing some weird uh, lock messages about it malfunctioning and no warnings in the UI about that. Uh, what the plugin will in the future also detect is if you have not yet changed your Octo, uh, your Octo, your, your Raspberry Pi um, default password. So not the one of Octo print because the user account in Octo print is something that you yourself set up on first start, but actually the thing of the Pi user that is running on the Raspberry Pi. And uh, a lot of people are probably ignoring the part in the setup guide where it tells you to change the password and in the future the pi support plugin will tell you hey you forgot this part please maybe do it now and again you can of course ignore that but you at least will be made aware of that obviously changing this password is a pretty big and important step to securing your installation because everyone out there knows that raspberry pi default password username and password combinations are pi and raspberry and if you do not change that, then anyone who somehow gains access, SSH access or physical access to your Pi can log in and do good or bad stuff with it. Yeah, so. And another thing that I added was, uh, yeah, considering that the OctoPi up-to-date image is now the primary, primary means of installing on the Raspberry Pis. So OctoPi, but with updated bootloader, kernel image and, um, and Octoprint. I figured it might probably be quite important in the future to know what exact build someone um, is running of these. And so, uh, yeah, I also adjusted a Pi support plugin to figure that out. Um, so I hope to be able to push this out sometime this week. I actually had it on schedule to do that this week, but way too much other stuff <laughs> demanded and screamed for my attention. So let's hope I will be able to roll that out soon yeah what else did i do yeah so two free card streams live streams if you are into that kind of stuff where i simply showed how i model some things uh, a lot of people seem to be quite happy about these 
And if you are wondering about my, how my knee is doing, thank you for asking. Way, way, way better. Uh, I had some final physiotherapy sessions early in January, but I'm through with that now and I'm actually back to climbing for three or four weeks now. Uh, carefully, <laughs> slowly and building up my strength again and stuff. And the knee is still not bendable past, I think the new record last night or the night before was something like 34 degrees or something. So anything tighter than that doesn't work yet, which of course gets in the way in some climbs, but mostly I can work around it. It is barely annoying anymore during everyday uh, activities. I'm still extremely happy though every morning when I put on my socks without having to go any through any contortions or tricks to, to manage to do that. So yeah, definitely huge plus. And just as a reminder to anyone who's wondering why am I talking about my knee, I had knee surgery on September 20th and it has been fun recovering from that. Yeah. Okay, so next steps. Um, what are they? First of all, you might have noticed there was a bunch of activity in the past few weeks regarding 180 and my plan is actually to see uh, to look into finalizing that release. So getting it to a point, also we, we are now at a point where it makes sense to uh, do a new release and so my goal is to make sure that any of the merges that I did the past weeks are solid, that there are no bugs left on first look at least and during development testing, uh, that the tests are all green, maybe add some more tests also, and um, that Python 2 properly complains about installing it and says this is the wrong Python version. This, by the way, was also a bit of a challenge at first. Um, and yeah, that everything just works fine. And um, I will also see that I get some of the pending PRs merged. Uh, as I said, there were still two in the pipeline at least that I want to take a look at and maybe there are more. And um, then I also need to test the migration path for the Python 2 people out there. So make sure that they will actually be redirected to the new um, to the new legacy repository and that they also get an update notification properly about the, uh, the legacy long term uh, runnable version that will be released there, which probably by the looks of it will be 174. But yeah, something like that. And um, yes, then I will also do some test runs and make sure that this whole path actually works on various installations. So the next uh, release testing will be a bit more complicated due to the Python 2, Python 3 switch. But in the future, I hope everything will be way, way less of a mess due to that. Okay. What I also hope to finally get back to is working on 2.0. Uh, I, at least now that I kicked Python 2 support out of the maintenance branch, could set up an automatic merge uh, job for uh, merging anything that I do on maintenance up on devil. So at least these things no longer diverge that much and hopefully will uh, make life easier for me and also anyone who wants to um, develop or test against them. Um, but this year I have not yet actually gotten around to do anything else on this branch, which is slightly annoying. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope that now that I've worked through all the backlog uh, and after I've pushed out 1.8 and the final 1.7, I will hopefully at least not feel like I'm drowning in maintenance tasks anymore and get a chance to get back on the horse, so to speak. And I've also been working on some stricter scheduling again to make sure that in the end of the day, there's, or actually at the end of the week, there's actually some time left to commit to development and not just maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Um, I hoped it wasn't necessary to be that strict in scheduling anymore, but sadly it is. Um, it has stolen back uh, time from, from, from development for maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. And yeah, that needs to be turned around again. And the only way to do that, that I know of, at least that works, is strict scheduling. So... This is what I'm going to do once 8.0 is released. Um, until then, I'll continue to focus on that and get this out of the door. Yeah. Okay, so now a quick look at the stats. And also, I need to quickly... <coughs> My throat is incredibly dry from all the talking. Um, I need to switch you over again. Right, this is what I wanted to do. So... Uh, yeah, uh, not that much of 
new uh, views here. Um, the number of seen instances is a bit higher than usual. There has been a steady increase in, in actually, but we will see this in another uh, in another dashboard briefly. Um, the amount of Python 2 instances out there is now at 22%, which I very, very much welcome. So apparently the next screen has helped. <laughs> and yeah, people are also still printing like they were always printing. So not that big of a surprise here. 173 is also already the leading version out there, which is good. Uh, means people actually update when they are asked to update. Um, I briefly talked about this, which is my um, which is my local uh, um, statistics panel, which I've set up based on the uh, publicly available data exports on data.octoprint.org/export, and I'm simply I, sim I simply ha have set up a little Node-RED automation which pulls in these exports every day and processes them a bit and then throws the data that it fetches out of that into an influx DB, and this is the visualizations that I've built on there, which are longer term than the ones that you get here, because these are live on the tracking database, which is limited to 60 days. Uh, first of all, because uh, space. <laughs> and second of all, because of the GDPR simply, because um, this is very raw data with a, yeah, with, with a lot of granularity, um, which I uh, have a hard, which I find hard to justify to keep any longer than that. But um, uh, with this, compiled data, which is pretty much just number crunching and the result of processing the raw data. I have no problems with keeping that longer. So we are now looking at six months of history here. And you can see that, uh, yeah, there has been quite a climb here um, right after Christmas. <laughs> this, is, this is here. And since then it has stabilized again a bit and slowed down. But yeah, um, and this is the print durations also a lot of activity before Christmas, then almost nothing, and then people returned from vacation and got back to the hobbies, apparently. And um, that is quite interesting to look at. Uh, also, instances over time per version. You can see when I released uh, 173 here and when it became, uh, when it when it went over to 172, all in all. And also, I I also figured out it might be interesting to actually see the differences from week to day to day, week to week, and month to month plotted here and this is also uh, what we have here total print duration the same thing and you as I said you see a very big hurry to print a ton of stuff right before Christmas and then whoop, no one prints anything anymore uh, and then uh, undecided and then back to printing a lot and now we are back in the valley again it's kind of fun this is the Python 2 versus 3 situation over time uh, somewhere uh, yeah, pretty much right around here, I released 173 with the next screen, which got the numbers in Python 2 to drop a bit, and then things started rising uh, more and more. Sadly, I do not have older values than that. I only came to the uh, came on the uh, only had the idea to plot that uh, right around the release of 173. But hey, at least some values. You also see the uh, 21 versus well, 79 percent split that I mentioned here, and uh, this is the download statistics for the Octopi up to date image um, per day. The difference per day. So that, that this is the absolute downloads. This is the relative downloads uh, compared to the prior date, and yeah, that is uh, fairly nice to look at as well, and to get an idea of how many people are actually downloading it versus how many show up in the tracking, which is also kind of fun to see the uh, the difference about. Also, I just noticed that my webcam was right over this, this diagram, but yeah, it's mostly just fun to look at. Probably more interesting for me than anyone else, but this is also, as I said, a private dashboard. I just figured I would also share it here. Okay, now back to me. That was the stats that I wanted to show you or give you an insight in. So as I said, normally we now would have a Q&A session here with questions in the backlog, but uh, yeah, this time no one submitted any and we covered everything that was already in there in number 42. So um, yeah, if there is nothing in the live chat, which I don't see in there right now, I guess we'll simply 
wrap things up here. Always an option. I mean, we don't have to have these things run for an hour. Especially not if my throat is as dry as it is right now. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I hope uh, that was an interesting look behind the scenes for all of you. And um, yeah, as you can see, I've been uh, surprisingly busy. I have to say that the first week back uh, from vacation with uh, not one, but two fires to put out, actually, first in form of the of the Raspberry Pi hardware revision and then in form of the Python 2 dependency issue. Um, that was a bit of a rough start <laughs> and I felt like, uh, yeah, I was I was not a very happy camper at the end of the week, but after that it got a bit better. So uh, rough start into the year, but at least uh, things recovered from there. Um, and yeah, then the flurry of PRs, which kind of caught me by surprise, but which is something that I've been hoping for so uh, for, for a long while to happen. So please keep them coming. I'm, I really appreciate it when other people also contribute to Octoprint and don't leave anything for me to implement. And um, yeah, that I think sums it up all in all. Okay, so I don't see anything in the live chat. You've all been very quiet overall, I have to say but no problem. So I'll simply say, uh, yeah, um, thanks for being here as always. I hope it was interesting. I hope you learned something um, new that you didn't know already. And uh, I hope that you all stay healthy and uh, all your prints succeed. And uh, yeah, then I can just say until next time, I of course will announce that on, on um, on, on a Patreon and on GitHub sponsors again. And uh, yeah, just happy printing. Bye.